So far, the tools we've used have made global changes, that is, changes to the entire image. But Adobe Camera Raw offers some great ways to target specific areas of an image to work on. Let's get started by going to our Chapter 11 folder. I'm going to hit Control O on the PC, Command O on the Mac. And we're going to select the file Selective Edits. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is limit our adjustments to specific colors within the image. We're going to go to the Hue, Saturation, and Luminance panel to do that. But first, I want to show you the recovery tool in all its glory. I touched on it in the last lesson and promised to give you a closer look. Well, here it is. Notice in the upper right portion of this image, I have a completely washed out and blown out sky. There is no detail here, just a solid wash of cyan and white. How do I know that? Well, if I go and turn on my highlight clipping preview up here above the histogram, look at that area that is covered in a red overlay. That red signifies pixels that have no detail. They're all blown out at a maximum value. You can see down in my basic panel, I've already set my exposure a bit to the left at a minus 0.15, but that has had no effect on these blown out pixels here, and that is where the recovery tool comes in handy. Watch what happens to the image as I drag this slider to the right. You can see those red areas disappear like magic. Camera Raw is recovering highlight information, finding a way to pull detail out of areas that once were lost. It's actually able to reconstruct missing pixel information to give us full red, green, and blue values. Notice that there are still some scattered areas of red remaining, and this is a typical real-world result. Now, quite often, you will be able to remove every last bit of red by dragging the recovery slider, but if you shoot in a very high contrast scene, you may end up with small pockets of red that Camera Raw could not reconstruct. But you can see that this is a marked improvement over where we started with the image. The recovery slider is a fantastic tool that's going to salvage a large number of your images. Now let's go to our Hue, Saturation, and Luminance panel. We get there by clicking on this fourth icon from the left. And look at all of these sliders here. We're going to start with Hue. Now you certainly know by now that I'm not going to say, oh, just play around with those sliders until you get something that you like. No, we have a much more precise way of working. First, let me turn off this highlight clipping preview. We don't need that anymore. To use the hue sliders here, we are going to visit our old friend, the targeted adjustment tool, which is located up here in the toolbar. And like the on image adjustment tool in Photoshop proper, this tool works by clicking on an image area and dragging. Here we'll be dragging left to right. Now with the hue tab selected, I'm going to click on these yellow shingles, drag to the left. And note the hue changes. If I drag to the right here, we can get a nice sort of a lemony lime kind of yellow. And what's great about this tool? Well, only those yellows have been shifted. We haven't changed the green in the trees. We haven't changed the blue or the reds in the house. The color that we click on is the color that gets adjusted no matter where it falls within the image. Let's go down here and click on the blue molding around this window. We'll click. We'll drag to the left. That gives us a more of a cyan kind of blue. Notice the reds are remaining untouched. Let's move here to the right and get something in the purple range. There we go. Let's move on to the saturation tab. Here we've got the same set of sliders, but this time we're going to affect, you guessed it, saturation. If I click over here in this foliage, target these greens, and drag to the left, you can see my green slider is moving. The yellow is moving as well. Yellow is a secondary color in there. And you can see the foliage is now desaturated by a large amount. Let's actually take it back and boost the saturation up a bit. And let's do something to the red in here. We'll click on the red. And let's boost the saturation up here as well. See how easy it is to target specific colors. We simply click and drag. We're not having to make a mask. We're not having to make any kind of selection. It couldn't be easier. The last thing I'll do here is click and take a little saturation out of the yellow there. And let's move on finally to our luminance tab. 
Luminance is just a fancy word for brightness. So with these controls, we're simply going to brighten or darken colors here in the image. Let's go back and click on the green foliage. And what I want to do is brighten these a bit. There we go. We'll open them up right about there. Now let's take a look at how much work we've actually done. I'm going to toggle the preview off and on. Here's the file we started with. And here's the file after our adjustments. A huge change. So you can get a sense of how drastic a change you can make to an image without creating a mask, without defining any selections. You simply click and drag. Now let's get even more selective. Instead of altering similar colors throughout an image, suppose we want to limit our adjustments to specific locations in the image. Well, that's easy to do with the adjustment brush. That tool is located up here in the toolbar. We'll click that and notice along the right we have a completely new set of options. Now exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. Those should look familiar. They come from the basic panel, but here's the difference. These adjustments will be limited to the exact locations that we specify. And how do we determine those locations? Simply by painting. Let's get started by adjusting one of these parameters. I'm going to start with brightness. I'll drag this slider to the left. Notice the image has not changed. I have not told Camera Raw where to apply this brightness value of minus 74. As I move the mouse over the image, notice that I've got a crosshair, which is going to be very important in a moment. And I've got two circles. The innermost circle is our brush size. That's the diameter that we'll be painting with. The outer circle indicates our feathering. Now we can change size and feathering very easily. By moving down here, I can drag the size slider to the right to get a larger brush. I'll keep this back where it was at 6. That'll be pretty good for this. Feathering, I'm going to set that all the way to the right at 100. We want a nice soft edge brush here. And for our purposes, we are going to leave flow and density both set to their maximum values of 100. What I would like to do is take down the brightness of this tree. So I'm simply going to click and drag to paint. Now two things should be very obvious. One, I've set a value that's much too strong. Two, I am spilling over here into the sky. Let's tackle that first issue. Here's the beauty of the adjustment brush. At any point after I have painted, I can readjust the settings. So I can back off this brightness slider here, give us something that's much more believable. And even though brightness was the only parameter that I adjusted, I could move the saturation slider, take color out of that, boost it to add more saturation. Let's set that back to zero. And this is the great thing about the adjustment brush. You paint, and then once you see visually what's happening, you can tweak any of these sliders to taste. Now let's take a look at what we can do about that spillover. I'm going to turn on this show mask checkbox. And now you will see a white overlay. This shows where I painted. That includes the diameter of the brush and the feathering. So you can see I've spilled out onto the edge of the roof. I've spilled out over into the sky. In short, I was very sloppy when I was painting. Let's turn off show mask for a moment. We're going to turn on the auto mask feature and we're going to paint that area again. Before we do that, we want to get rid of the painting that we just did, and notice that we have this little bullseye icon here over the image that's called a pin. The pin will be placed at the location at which you start painting, and a pin simply tells you that that adjustment brush is active. And because Camera Raw allows for multiple and separate brush adjustments, you can end up with multiple pins on a single image. We're going to delete the pin by simply pressing the delete key on the keyboard. Now I'm going to paint and I'll do it just as sloppily as I did the first time. Notice that I have reduced the brightness setting so I'm getting a much more realistic result right off the bat. Now that I've painted, let's go in and turn on the show mask preview. 
Notice now how my mask has been automatically limited. It didn't spill over into the edge of the buildings. It didn't spill over into the sky. When you turn on auto mask, that tells Camera Raw to limit your painting. And what does it limit it to? Well, I talked about that crosshair earlier. With auto mask turned on, Camera Raw looks at the colors that fall directly underneath your crosshair. No matter the size of your brush, no matter the size of your feathering, your adjustments will be limited to colors and tones that match what is directly underneath your crosshair. So as I was painting in here, I can be as sloppy as I want. I just make sure that the crosshair does not spill off of this foliage and you won't have any spillover into these neighboring colors and tones. A very, very useful tool to use when you need to be really precise about your selections. I'm going to turn off Show Mask and Auto Mask. Those of you paying very close attention to the adjustment brush panel may notice a new option that we did not see in the basic panel. That's this color option here. So I'm going to quickly show you what that's about. This option lets us paint with a color, changing color in an image. But unlike with the hue slider, we can limit that color change specifically to where we paint. Now before we get started with this, I need to direct your attention to this pin up in the top of the tree. Notice that it has a black circle in it. That means it is active. Any change that we make to any of those adjustment brush settings will apply to that adjustment. And we don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit New. I'm going to make a brand new adjustment brush setting. Here I'm going to take Brightness and set that to zero. I don't want to change the brightness. What I do want to change is color. So I'm going to click in this color swatch box and I'm going to choose something in the orange range over here. Simply by clicking, I've got a brand new color. I hit OK. Now what I'd like to do is change the color of this window molding. Notice now the size of my brush relative to the window molding. What will happen if I paint like this? Yes, my color change will spill over onto the side of the building, and I don't want to do that. So back we go to our auto mask. Turn that on. And with my slightly oversized brush, watch what happens. Notice that color change is not spilling over into the siding of this house at all. It is nicely being limited to exactly where we want it. We're not getting any spillover at all on that yellow siding. Perfect. Notice we have a second pin. This one has a black circle in the middle. That means it is active. Now if you look closely, you may see that we did get some spillover right where this house number is located. Why? Well, that purple matches the purple color on which we were painting. How can we fix that? Well, we can use, for the first time, the erase brush. Let's go and click on erase here. Now what this brush does is simply erase the effect that we just painted. Notice that we have size, feathering, and flow options there. We're going to leave those all at their defaults, and I'm simply going to click and paint over this area, taking out that adjustment that spilled over onto this identical color. How easy is that? The last tool I want to show you here is the graduated filter, and that's up in our toolbar right next to the adjustment brush. Once we select the graduated filter tool, you'll notice that the panel on the right looks identical to the adjustment brush panel minus the brush controls. You'll also notice that we've picked up our color setting from the adjustment brush. Now I don't want to change the color in this adjustment I'm about to make, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn this off. Click, and I'll move my hue down to 1 and drag my saturation slider all the way down to 0 in effect turning off that color change. Now the graduated filter tool behaves very similarly to the gradient tool in Photoshop in that it allows us to create an adjustment, have it begin at 100% or full strength, and make a nice seamless transition all the way down to 0%. This tool is most often used to control lighting in an image and that's how we're going to apply it. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag my brightness value down here. And what I want to do is simply darken a portion of this sky. I'm going to place the mouse in the upper right area of the image. And I'm simply going to click and drag down. And you can see we've got a darkening effect going on here. 
I'm dragging at an angle to match the slope of the roof, but if you want to drag in a straight line, hold down the shift key while dragging. I'm going to put it just about there. The red dot signifies the end of this effect, so anything below the red dot in this case will not have the effect. At and above where our green dot is located, we have a full strength application of this adjustment. In between the green and the red dot, we have a nice seamless gradation from 100% all the way down to zero. Once you've drawn this, you can modify it. We could simply place the mouse along this dotted black line and move the entire gradient as a unit. I'll line it up just so it touches the roof. If we place our mouse close to the green circle, we have a double-sided arrow. We could drag this up to extend it. We could do the same thing where the red circle is. Notice, however, if I place the mouse further away from the red circle, I get a double bent arrow, which means I can rotate this adjustment in any direction. Let's line it up just about there. Looks pretty good. And again, as with the adjustment brush, I'm free after the fact to adjust my setting. So if that brightness looks a little bit harsh, I could back off of it slightly. And if I decide that I want to have this effect spill further down, I can simply click here, drag this red line down just about there. I'm going to touch up the angle just a smidgen. And there we go. We have no shortage of tools inside Camera Raw to perform selective edits. We are finished working with this image so you can press the cancel button. If you'd like to maintain these changes however and reopen the file later, simply press done.